All right, everybody, I hope you're all doing okay today. So today's video is Maradon. But just like always, guys, if you've not seen the last video in the series where I acquire some interesting items from Mongoro, then you can find that in a card in the upper right hand portion of the screen right now. So if you like the look of that video, then go check it out. Anyways, as you can see, we're on our way to Maradon. Now, to be specific about this video, we're actually doing princess runs. The reason for this is simply because I've tried multiple times over the past week or so to figure out the best way to do this as a paladin. And unfortunately, I didn't get very far with the bosses. You see, I can actually solo the goblin boss, and in some cases, if I bring everything to the table and get lucky, then I can solo landslide as well. But that's as far as it goes. And if I did do them, then they take ages to kill. So ultimately, it's not really possible to solo this as a paladin. I mean, sure, you could potentially take lower levels to boost for the loot and sell the runs that way, providing they assist in the kills. But in my opinion, that's not really the best way to go about things. Remember, the goal is to make gold for yourself and if you can help someone out for free along the way, then go for it. So anyways, some information about this place. For this route, in order to make the most gold, it's advised that you make use of herbalism and mining here, as this will increase the overall gold made per hour. In terms of raw gold, you'll get less than one gold per run. Each run can last around 10 minutes if you fast, which means you may hit lockout. The route we take, we kill the goblin boss, landslide and princess, skipping all the trash as we go, only stopping for herbs or mining nodes. The spec and gear we're using is the same as always guys. If you're curious to know what that is, then you can find a link in the description to this video, linking you to a video that I made showing all of my gear and talents. And finally, as you can see, I'm bringing a level 60 hunter along for this. Although as a paladin, it could work with most likely any class, even a rogue, if he has good gear before we begin you can see that our starting gold is 539 with that being said let's start the timer and go shall we so since i'm freestyling right now guys and not reading off notes let me ask how do you guys prefer things do you like the style of the video now where i'm recording a separate commentary or do you prefer it the older way where i'm literally talking as i'm going along playing the game which includes clicking and keyboard noises Whichever one you prefer or don't mind, then post in the comment section below to let me know since your feedback is valued. And after all, it's you guys who I'm doing these videos for anyway. Also guys, I'm getting a few questions regarding streaming, so I'd like to address that real quick. So the answer is no, I don't stream at the moment on any platform, although I would definitely like to do it in the near future. See, as you probably know with me, I can talk for England at times, hence why most of my videos are pretty long on this channel. And quite frankly, with all of the comments that I get on here and the discussions that I do have with some of you, I'll be honest and say I'm actually enjoying it and I like talking to you guys. So I can definitely see that as the channel grows, that will become a regular thing with me. But as it stands right now, like I say, I'm only a baby goldfish in a giant ocean, so to speak. So I think that once the channel grows a little, then we can begin to implement that. So what we're doing here is our friend over there is just mining up the mithril node. The best thing to do whilst they're doing that is obviously to just head straight towards the boss. Um, so yeah, as you can see there, you know, we looted a few bits of mithril. We got star ruby and a couple of uh, solid stones. Um, so also guys, when you're on this little bit here, um, just near the edge here is usually a ghost mushroom. So keep your eye out for that. Also, there, um, there can be a mithril node as well, just where we jumped. So just keep your eyes peeled for that. So uh, right now we're, we're literally right close to the um, the goblin boss. As you can see there, our friend's heading towards the, the node just there that he uh, marked on the map, uh, which there, he, he's mining it right there. So uh, what I decided to do now is engage in the goblin boss. Okay, so now that we're engaging the goblin boss, make sure that if, if you are a paladin, make sure that you're tanking him right close to the wall like I am here. Um, obviously the reason for that is because as you've just seen there, the, the uh, patrol there, um, obviously you know you want to avoid that. So, you know, th this guy's really easy to kill. He doesn't really hit very hard. The only thing to be wary about is the, uh, the fire thing that he does. Um, but you know, as you can see, 
we, we got him down really fast. So there's the first drop. The uh, That's actually the shield that I've got in some of my other videos. Um, so again, if you're a paladin, you know you know that you can solo this, so it's really easy to acquire this item. Um, so anyway, once he's dead, we'll simply make our way back up. Now, the good thing about having a hunter with you during this is is um, aspect of the pack, because you know th this increases your movement speed by thirty percent, and you know it, it just speeds up the run overall, which is really good. So staying close to the edge as possible, being careful not to fall off, um, and yeah, just hugging all the walls, skipping all the mobs, and then making up our way back up to landslide. And as you can see, four minutes in, we're doing really well. We're making good time. So at this point, um, what I do is I tell our friend here um, to just, just wait so we can continue to do landslide because the original plan was, um, as you know, in most princess runs, you, you kill the crocodile boss instead of landslide. Um, but our friend here said to us that um, basically it's kind of buggy in, in the sense that when you pull him from the bridge that you get to in a minute, sometimes he usually brings an ad with him, which you don't really want. Um, so instead, I said to him, you know, since we're doing really well for time, we may as well do landslide to burn a bit of time. Um, that way, you know, we get extra loot and, you know, we still most likely would hit lockout. So all we do is we simply just come up here, avoid the giants and uh, engage the boss. Um, so right here in this little corner bit is a safe spot. Um, so when that patrol uh, comes back, as you're going to see right now, uh, if we go right in the corner, you know, he, he does walk right past us, which is really good. So we just wait here for a second. And there he is, there's the big boy. So we just engage him straight away and nuke him down. Now, like I say, guys, at the start of the video, you know, in some cases, if I get really lucky and I bring lots of things with me, like potions and whatnot, I can actually solo this guy. Um, you know, I'll be honest, he, he is quite a, a struggle to get down uh, by yourself, but you know, two man is a lot easier as you can see. Like, look how fast he's going down. Um, the only things to be wary about really is that knockback that he does, as well as um, stunning you to summon those adds. Um, but you don't really need to kill the adds um, because, obviously, as you're going to see in a second, when he dies, they die as well. Um, you know, but if you do do this solo, um, just you know try and kill those as fast as possible so there he is guys he's down uh, as you can see in the corner there there's actually a ghost mushroom so again if you are a herbalist pick that up and um, see i stop there to just um show you so just be aware of that Also, guys, do do any of you guys know um, specifically what those ghost mushrooms are actually used for? I'm presuming it's um, for some of the flasks that you can make, um, since obviously the the price of them is pretty pretty high to be honest. For saying you know that they're quite a lower level um, herb to pick, or at least I think they are. I'm not entirely sure. Um, so yeah, if you know what they're used for, which I, I am guessing it's flasks then just post it in the comment section below for everybody to see. So once we get to this bit here, it's just a simple run straight to the princess. I mean, obviously when you get to this point, just be careful. Um, to stay right in the center of each mob as you run into uh, through them. And obviously that patrol there, keep your eye out for that as well. And 
And in case you didn't know, guys, this is actually our first run together. So what we're doing is we're literally testing the waters out. Um, hence why I'm talking to our friend here, asking him, you know, what's the best way to go about this? Because you see, I, I remember like when I tried this myself before, like I tried to kill her and <laughs> as you can imagine, I didn't really get very far at all. Um, so yeah, simply when you get to this bit, hop on over to there like so. And uh, yeah, for this, if you are a paladin and you've got another person doing it, I mean, if it's a hunter or a warlock, just let them do the thing and kite her around like you see in all the other videos. Um, the only thing that you can really do here is, you know, just throw a couple of heals to make it easier on the hunter or the warlock, or you can just do a little bit of damage. But when you do do the damage, uh, make sure that you don't have Righteous Fury up and make sure that it's not a lot of damage because you don't want to take aggro off her. So as you can see, you know, straight away there, I've popped, um, sorry, not I've popped it, I've, I've judged Seal of Light just to help our friend out a little bit. Um, keeping away from that AoE that she does because she does hit really hard. Um, you know, trying to get a couple of heals off here as well as we go. Also, I noticed from a, a few other videos that I've seen um, of people solo in this, they make good use of that trinket. Um, I forget the name of it, but it's from a quest line in um, Eastern or Western Plaguelands. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not really a difficult quest to do, but um, what happens is when you use it, it summons those servants. Um, the reason for that is, well, the reason why they use that is because it um, basically it's meant to trigger her doing that AOE thing or whatever it is, just so they can, you know, get off a load more damage as she's doing that. As you can see there, she's doing the AOE, attacking the uh, the servants, and then she was just a um, DPSing her down. So yeah, you know, this is a fairly, well, it's sort of a lengthy fight. You know, it's not too difficult, I guess, when there's two of you at least. Um, so yeah, what I'll do now is I'll speed the video up just so you know you guys don't have to stand around watching it because it's basically the same thing. Okay, and there she is. She's down. Right, so now as we do, you notice that you get two bits of loot from here, which is really good. You know, it increases that uh, overall gold value. And there you go, guys. As you've seen, we did it in just under 11 minutes that time. Uh, our fastest time was about 10 minutes and 5 seconds, I believe it was. Obviously, our friend here is just passing on all the loot so I can basically take it all and give us a good uh, gold value at the end of the video. So yeah, as you can see, we open up the bags. Uh, you know, that's all the loot that we got. And as you can see, we didn't really gain a lot of loot. And again, this is kill number two. This is all the loot that we got. And again... You know, the gold hasn't really increased much. And finally, the same again. Uh, our third and final run in the dungeon. So yeah, that's basically it, guys. So I, as you can see right now, what we're doing is I'm telling our friend here to invite one of my alts. Um, the reason for this is basically because what we have to do now is we have to... Both of us have to log off. One of us goes onto the alt, whichever one it is. Um, in this case, it's my alt. So what I do is I log onto my alt... Um, she passes me the leader, then logs off. Once she's logged off, I'll reset Maradon, I'll reset the dungeon, and then basically what happens is we, we both wait a minute, um, then we both switch, uh, log back on. Um, and then what will happen with that is, as you know, or as you may not know, um, basically it, it teleports you from wherever you are in the dungeon right to the start of it, which is really good. Because um, obviously, as you know, you know, it's quite a lengthy run back to the start of the instance, so... That is by far the fastest way to reset the instance from here. Or at least in this particular dungeon, so yeah. Okay, so now that's three runs done, let's go to the vendor, shall we? So here we are at the vendor. Now, as you can see, we're left with 540 gold. 
So right away, that's a one gold increase just from the money that we've got from killing the bosses. And taking a look at the repair bill, that's nearly two gold. So for me at least, that's quite high. And taking away that, we are left with 538 gold. Okay, so bear with me real quick, just want to sort these bags out. Okay, so this is all the loot that we got from free runs, which was actually 30 minutes worth of farming. So let's sell all the junk real quick. There we go, 500 and 58 gold which gives us a nearly 20 gold increase just from selling all of the blues that we gained which is pretty good to be honest okay and like i say it don't end there taking a look at all of the ore that we gained along the way and the stones as well as the gem we can see that's nearly an extra four gold from those if we roughly round it up and finally just to show you guys let's head on over to the auction house really quick just to check the price of ghost mushrooms as they're the herbs that we can get from there so as you can see that's roughly an extra one to five gold each that we could potentially make from those as well giving us a total of 20 gold from the vendor money four gold from mining and 10 gold from the herbs so we got 25 gold if we round it all up from 30 minutes worth of work potentially going up to 35 or so if we did have herbalism so let's double that to give us our hourly rate of 50 to 70 gold per hour and there we have it but keep in mind this is a two-man operation so unfortunately we have to slash this in half again, but it's still a solid 25 to 50 gold per hour. So as a paladin, it kind of is and kind of isn't viable. I mean, if you need ghost mushrooms for the flasks or whatever they're used for in order for the price to be so good for them, then sure, go for it. I bet you could easily find warriors or rogues who would want to join you in order to make some gold for this method themselves. But again, this is more suited for hunters or warlocks as they seem to be the king of this place, much like mages are in Zulfaric. So until the next time, everybody. Farewell. Our next adventures will take us into the Sunken Temple. So if you're looking forward to that video, then go ahead and subscribe and be sure to hit the bell icon to be notified when I release new videos. That way, you'll be the first to be notified when I release that video. So until the next time, guys.